Hey, welcome back to the channel today. We're at Oak Tree National. I just finished the front nine, had a blast out there. I'm getting ready to head to the back nine. Back nine's pretty cool. It's got some great holes. One of the holes out there that's kind of famous is called the postage stamp. It's a tiny little par three with a little green. It's got a nine iron in there, but it's a hard shot, so I can't wait to show you a postage stamp. So we're gonna get out there, play the back nine, and if you're enjoying this content, by the way, please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon for, for notifications, and give me a thumbs up, because I'm gonna show you all the shots I hit out there, walk you through the stuff, and maybe even show you some trouble shots if I don't hit it so good. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good, that they're gonna go out there and play great, because of the single plane swing. All right, so number 10 here at Oak Tree National is called Teeth of the Dog. Now the reason this hole is called Teeth of the Dog is because this hole heads directly into the south wind. In Oklahoma, the wind tends to prevail from the south. Um, not always, but 80% of the time, it's a heavy south wind. Today, it's a little bit windy, but not too bad. So this thing is called Teeth of the Dog because it hits it straight into the teeth. This hole isn't really too tough, although I've hit anything from a four iron into this hole all the way into a sand wedge. So it depends on the wind, right? I mean, that's why golf is interesting because on one time you can hit a shot and put the hole plays easy and the next day it plays hard. If you look at the way this hole sets up, the bunkers on the left are really the target line. They're probably 260 to 270 to those bunkers, maybe 280 to that far bunker. So we want to favor left side of this hole and then the shot into the green isn't a piece of cake. The pin is on the left side of the green. I am right now kind of checking the pin out because one of the things you can do with hole strategy is kind of locate hole location before you play the hole. It might give you some information of where you want to approach that flag some, that's the hole backward approach. So the flag's on the left side of the green. It's easy to come in there from any side in the fairway. I'm going to hit it right at that left side of the fairway. So once again, remember what I said when I played the other nine, if I want to hit to the left side, I go to the right side of the tee. All right, let's check my line here. Just favor the left side. So that, even though it went right down the left side, it's perfect. It'll be just in the right side of the fairway because once again, like all these holes at Oak Tree, the ball tends to kick to one side or the other. So that'll be just on the right side of the fairway even though I hit it down the left side. It was good though, low. All right, so pretty good shot. Um, one of the things I love about this golf course so much is that it's, it's a ball strikers course. You gotta hit good shots. Notice how I'm actually in the right center of the fairway. The ball came in here and just kind of rolled down this direction. So it's, uh, and the wind's coming this way. So the ball got pushed here. So if I would have hit towards the center of the fairway, I'm over there in that bunker over there. So that's what's great about this golf course is you really have to pay attention. Um, it's a hard golf course because you have to pay attention. You cannot go to sleep. This course wants to, the beautiful thing about this course and what Pete Dye did when he designed it, he said, look, I'm gonna make a t number 10 not so hard. I'm gonna let you kind of go to sleep a little bit. But now that you have this shot into the green, you can see there's, there's a massive bunker to the right, which is basically, it's just dead, dead zone over there. And then you got the pin that sits on this little tiny spot on the front left of the green. So let's take a quick measurement. And you can imagine this shot, you know, it's probably gonna be in the 130 range. Let me take a look here. Got, well, I got 132 to the flag, 139 with the elevation. So it's a 140 yard shot, but it's into the wind a little bit. So giving it about a 10 yard additional, nah, eight to 10 yards into the wind. And the thing about it is, is it's elevated. One of, the sh uh, one of the difficulties I have, this is just a personal thing for me, is a little upslope into the wind, uphill. <laughs> All those things kind of go kind of against my nature a little bit. 
So that's why these shots, because the ball wants to go up in the air and you want to keep it down. It, it kind of counterintuitively wants me to hit a, a weird shot. So I hit a 9-iron 135, but I'm not going to hit a 9-iron here. I'm actually going to hit an 8-iron and just try to keep a good flight on the golf ball and see if I can't get it. Find my 8-iron here. See if I can't get an 8-iron. You know, if I blast an 8-iron, and this is a really good example of a really good example of how wind affects golf shots because you know I could get up there and just kind of swing hard at an on iron right and the ball goes up and then it lands and it gives me a really bad shot from the front of the green or I can be kind of smart about it and say hey look behind the hole I got a little bit of room might leave me a longer putt but if I can just flight the ball with a nice flight and maybe knock it in there at least it takes the front of the green out of play so this 8 iron it's a 150 club I got a 140 yard shot basically I, it, I've got to hit it pretty good, but I, I think I can get it there. Let's give it a shot. So I kind of fanned it a little to the right. This is this is what I'm talking about. The wind, the wind's coming into my face to that direction. I hit it okay. I didn't hit it terrible, but I had a, a tiny bit of left to right spin on the ball. I felt that. And it drifted it off to the right. <laughs> but the good thing is, is I hit an 8-iron. I didn't hit the 9. And so what it did is I got over the bunker, and it's not a terrible shot. It wasn't my favorite shot in the world. But I got a birdie putt, and that's all you can ask for. Once again, wind, wind is a huge factor in golf. It's a big deal. So you got to be smart in the wind, and that's what you learn. That's the... That's the cool thing about playing golf in Oklahoma is you get smart with wind because there's a ton of it here. Okay, so, you know, this isn't a fantastic golf shot, but, you know, I'm the front right of the green. Um, kind of got to come up a slope here a little bit. Straight up the hill. Give this one a little bit of a walk here and take a look at it. And today, I'm just going to kind of focus on getting a really nice alignment of, of how I want the ball to roll here. We're just going to work on the roll of the ball today. I like, I like the idea of just hitting good putts and rolling it good. This one's going to break a little bit up the hill to the left. I think got that ball lined up pretty good there. No, let me just give it a little more. I gotta give it a little more. There we go. Pretty good putt. It just can't hit that slope and killed it right there. It's a big slope right in here, but you know, not bad for a, a start for the day. All right, see, not a difficult hole, but it's all about position, approach, and then trying to make a putt. So the wind is a big factor always out here. Um, and one of the things about this course, which is why I love to play it so much, is that it doesn't give you a whole lot of gifts. Like it's not gonna sit there and give you five chances at birdie. So when you do, that wasn't a chance at birdie, that's just make a good two putt, get up, get out of there. But when you have an opportunity to make birdie, you gotta take it out here. So you always have that little pressure on you, which I love about this golf course. All right, number 11 windmill. This to me is my toughest driving hole in the course. I'm not sitting here trying to talk myself out of this, but, but this tee box here. Okay, so I gotta explain this hole because I love this hole in the, in the sense of this hole challenges me greatly. The, the everything slopes majorly to the right. The bunkers on the right are about 275, right in my range. If I hit it, that's where the ball goes. You have got to keep the ball. You're, you're really aimed down the left side. There's only a small window on the left side of the fairway. I, I might as well just put a plaque down there on the right with my name on it, because I hit it there so often, and it's really dead to the right. So I gotta do my best here to hit, make a really good confident swing and get the ball to go down the left-hand side. Now, part of the problem is that the tee box lines you up 
I mean, it literally lines you up at the houses on the right side. I mean, this is where the tee box is going. So it goes, and I, for me, it, remember on the, when I practice, my, my nature, it, when I have to go left against my nature, it's, it's hard for me. So I've really got to pay some attention here. So what I'm going to do, one of the things that I do that helps me a ton, and you should do this, is, you know, Callie makes the triple track golf ball. I'm going to use the triple track right now to help my alignment. I got that triple track going down the left side of the fairway. Now, look, that's not cheating. That's just giving me a little bit of an advantage there to give my mind some confidence on the left side. I need everything I can, I can get here to keep that, my mind on the left side of this fairway. So let's see what kind of shot I can hit. Oh, so good there. Look at that. So the ball literally started left rough, wind howling from here above the trees, knocked it right in the middle of the fairway. That is the line. Uh, if you could say, Todd, for the rest of your life, just drop the ball there, I'm good with that. Because that's that would probably save me a lot of shots here at Oak Tree National. All right, so let me see here. So this is a good shot. I mean, this is this is really. To be honest with you, I, I don't. I, this is ideal, and generally, I I'm not here. Generally, I I tend to creep on that right side more. This is um, if I could take it from here every single day, it would be great. I've been further down there. Um, you know, conditions change on the golf course. For example, if if the morning like today, there was some dew on the ground. Ground's a little bit wet. It's probably taken. I'm probably losing 10 or 15 yards maybe on my drives. Maybe not, maybe, maybe a little less than that. But, but anyway, conditions affect what goes on. So, all right, so let's take a look. This is windmill. Check out the windmill behind the green. Really cool. Right, the, right over the flag there. So let's check my yardage. I'm gonna probably have 170 maybe, let's see. Okay, so I got 182 with slope, 172 to the flag. Um, center of green. 168 to the center, so pins behind center of green. Now, the thing about this is this green is elevated. Notice 172 flag, 182 with slope, so you got 10 degrees of elevation there. So, so just th figure out what happens. You hit a shot into this green, it's coming in lower because of the elevation, so the ball will tend to have a hop to it. So. These are things you kind of just pay attention to a little bit when you have elevation on the green. So 180, uh, get it back there. That's a hard six iron for me. I think that's what I'm gonna do. 168 center. It's just a good six iron for me to get it back to that flag. And a little bit of course knowledge here. Think about this. Um, I don't generally always think about this, but you're better off a little bit past the flag than you are short of it here because obviously most of the trouble is short of the green. So anyway, let's hit the six iron and see if I can't catch, catch it at the windmill there. I, I'm gonna just try to hit it right at the flag. Let's go for it. I don't know if I got all the way back there. It might be a little short of the flag, but it was a good shot. I hit it right at it. One of the things that my brain went to on that, I just kind of tell you how I'm thinking. My tee shot, it's, we're down in a valley here, and you can't, it's, it's really hot right here. When my, I hit my tee shot, it got up in the air, and the wind shoved it over here. So, because I literally hit it down the left side. So when I was over that shot, I'm looking at the windmill thinking the windmill's freaking blowing. Like the windmill's moving right there. And look at the direction it's moving. So, so my initial reaction was that the wind's gonna kill this ball to the right. So you kind of saw that happen there. So I, I just wanna let you know what was going through my head on that shot when I kind of was checking the wind in, in the back of my mind before I actually pulled the trigger on that. Okay, look, pretty good shot, right? I mean, on, look, on 11, on windmill, 
if I could have two shots in here inside 30 feet, this is, uh, this is good golf. This, um, but, but look, this hole is very hard, but it's one of my favorites because it literally tests me every time I get up to it. This hole plays different every time. Every single time I play, the hole plays different. Every time that, um, you know, I'm getting into a competitive round out here, this one's the one that puts you in that kind of, all right, buckle down, right, hit a good shot. So this is the hole that does that for me. All right, let's see if we can't make a putt here. I'm gonna do a quick read on it. Um, yeah, let's take the flag out. I'd like to see the ball go in the hole. I can feel this one going that way here. Just I'm gonna walk below it a little bit. All right, let's take a look. I think I got it left edge. Left edge to favoring. Yeah, left edge. It's got to go more than that. All right, let's put a good roll on this thing. See if I can get it going. Oh, caught the left edge. So look, they're subtle. They're super subtle. And a birdie on this hole, man, that's so exciting. I'm so happy for that. That is a big deal. Think about this. Like, if you can play the hard holes well, like if you can play a hole like this, look, driver six iron, relatively long hole, tough shot into the green. Walk away with birdie. It's like a two shot swing in the field. Love that. All right, this is number 12. It's called Prairie Dunes. Now, here's what's funny about this hole. Um, when I was in high school, I grew up, I grew up a couple, uh, about 25 minutes from here, and we, it was a, this was in the middle of nowhere at the time. And this hole, um, I couldn't hit it very far in high school, and so all that brush, I could not carry the ball across that stuff. And it's only like 200 yards at the most, but I didn't hit it very far. This hole was my biggest nightmare when I was in high school. I mean, I was so afraid of this hole because I couldn't hit it anywhere. I'd hit it in that stuff every time. I was like, okay, just hit it in the junk. I mean, I wanted to lay up to the ladies' tees. But the way this hole sets up, it's a very, very good golf hole. These trees are encroaching from the left. The line is really straight down the left side of these trees, which kind of scares you because you got to really cut the left corner here. I'm, I tend to keep it favor right here and bust it down the right side. And just if I hit it in the rough, I hit it in the rough. Right side gives you a great angle, left side does not. So really the line here is to keep it down the right hand side. Now notice the tee box, it goes straight down the left side. So I'm gonna go to the right side of the tee only because, now keep in mind that you're going, well Todd, you're on the right side of the tee, isn't that to hit it to the left side of the fairway? Well, the right side of this tee is aiming me towards the right side of the fairway because the tee is going down the left. So it's not necessarily whether you go to the right side or the left side, it's where the angles are, right? So right now, the way I've lined my ball up, it's just down the very right corner of the fairway, and I'm gonna try to get it down that line. All right, let's hit my high school nemesis hole. Let's do it. So, that ball was perfect. And what I did is I hit it down my line and had a tiny little bit of draw down there. You're gonna see it's gonna be right in the center. It's a tough shot because those trees kind of feel like they're they're kind of keeping your kind of keeping you on that left side. They kind of block you out. So um, I'll take that every single time though. I'll bet y'all have about a nine iron left in the green. So that ball I hit perfect, but here's the problem with this hole. You're gonna see it is on the absolute far left side of this fairway. Look how close it is to the creek. And I hit that good. That's why I try to favor the entire right side of this hole. Now, I got a shot, you know, it's close. Look at the, look at the tree line encroaching here. And, and luckily, I don't know if you can see the way that green sets up, but this is not a good shot. If I, it, here's a perfect example I talked about on number 10. If that hole location was on the back left of the green, 
I don't have a shot from here at a back left hole location. Luckily, the pin's on the right half of the green, and I have a pretty, you know, I have a shot at it, even though the tree's coming in a little bit, it's not too bad. Once again, think about this. I mean, I, I should have, which I didn't. This is what I call stupid golf. I didn't check the hole location before I played the hole. I would have probably even favored the right side even more. So make sure you check hole location. Learn your lesson. This is something I might put down on my notebook is like, don't be stupid. Pay attention to hole location before you play the hole. It's a big deal out here. Okay, so let's check the yardage real quick. So I got a little lucky that I'm on the left side and I still have a pretty decent shot. exactly 150 to the hole. I hit an 8-iron 150. Now, um, yeah, I think I'm going to hit the 8. The, uh, it's on the down slope. The ball's sitting down on the down slope. That means it's going to have a little de-lofting to the club. So this 8 will tend to go further than 150 because of that slope. So I'm a little bit... Um, I'm going to rethink this for a second. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a yardage to the uh, front of the green. So I got, I got 135. I got 135 to the front, one fit, pins about middle, 155. So I need this shot to go between 135 and 145 in there. I'm actually going to hit a 9 iron. I would rather be a little short here than, than blast it over the back of that green. Okay, let's hit the 9 iron. The other thing, too, is I felt the wind there a little bit. So remember the wind, I'm, 11 was cutting this way, so the wind's kind of helping from the right just a little bit. So I'm aiming right half of that green of the flag there. All right, good swing here. Yeah, I didn't hit it good. The... Um, I hit it right at it, but I caught it a little bit chunky. It went straight at it, but it's, it's exactly why I hit that shot because it's on the front fringe. And if I would have um, tried something that with an eight iron hit too hard, I would have been over the back or something. So look, it's a good miss. And isn't the game, isn't the game really about like how good your misses are? You're not gonna hit every shot perfect. Sometimes slopes mess with, mess with your head a little bit. Sometimes you just don't feel good. It's really about how good are those shots where you don't quite catch. And that was one of those shots. I didn't hit it good, but I'm in okay shape. Let's go down and see if I can get it up and down. Okay, so one of the things that you saw is um, I left the ball kind of short. You know, maybe I'm rethinking the shot a little bit. You see that there's quite a bit of room back here, and then you got quite a bit of slope here. So I might have hit the wrong club on that shot. Obviously, I didn't hit it good either. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. It's on the front side of the green. One of the things that you have to pay attention to, which I think is really important, and if I, if I think about that shot I just hit back there, it wasn't really a technical problem. Like, I, I'm not sitting there going, well, I made a bad swing. I just didn't feel that good over the shot. And one of the things that you have to do when you're playing is you have to get, you kind of have to get tuned into how you feel. Back on that shot, I'm sitting there and I just don't, you know, I'm kind of a little bit of doubts creeping in. Is it nine iron? Is it eight? And I don't tend to make good swings when there's any type of doubt. So that's just stuff you learn from, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm a, okay, next time I get in that situation, I may step back and go, okay, the biggest thing is, is getting into the shot and committing and hitting it and you hit better shots, even if you have the wrong club in your hand. So whether that was the right or wrong club, I might rethink it, but it's just that I wasn't very committed to it was the problem. All right, so let's hit this shot. Now this putt's gonna break hard left it's coming up the slope. Look at the big hill over here. It's coming down this way. This is a speed putt right here. This is just nothing but speed. Got to get it through the fringe. And by the way, the fringe isn't too bad. Otherwise, I would chip it. Uh, so I'm just going to try to get it through the fringe and then see if I can't get it to, uh, to trickle down to that hole. This is very much just lag it up there and try to get our par and get out of here.
you see how much that cut to the left. I mean, that was a really good putt, right? I mean, it, any time that I have the ball above the hole and it has a chance to go in, I love it because because the whole time you're like, it's going to go in, but you know, it's at least because it's on that side of the hole. So that was a good putt. And by the way, practice those three footers because you get a lot of them, right? Those are scary sometimes. Okay, this hole is postage stamp. The reason they call it postage stamp is their signature hole out here. It's not, it's a tiny little par three. It is a creepy looking little green. It's tiny. And then there's just a peat die, you're dead, wall on the left hand side. The real problem with this hole is, not, is just not only the size of the green, it's the fact that the green is always very firm. And so, and you're hitting downhill. So think about it, you got a, a ball coming in with lots of velocity, downwind, lots of velocity, and then you gotta land it. If I wanna get it anywhere close to that flag, there is a small little landing area, which isn't very smart. So what I'm gonna do, and the tee box is over here, we'll go over here. I took a couple different clubs, so I don't know what the club is. Normally it's a nine iron or a wedge but you wanna just hit it to the right side of this little par three, it'll kinda of go to the left a little bit. It's a, I'm not gonna say it's, it's like a simple little nine iron because it really is, but there's just so much stuff that can happen up there. So let's just measure this thing. Well, guess what? It's 158 with the slope. Um, so I'm gonna hit an eight iron actually today because the pin's back. Um, it's probably the one of the par threes where I never hit at the flag. I just don't hit the flag here. You, it's just so tempting to take a short iron and just go, oh, I'll hit at the flag. But there's, there's, just the, there's just no chance to miss the golf ball if you do. So I'm gonna take this eight iron and my goal here, I'm, I'm lining the ball up. Notice how I line the ball up. My goal here is to hit a nice little soft solid eight iron at the right center of the green and if it goes a little left maybe have a chance for birdie if not I'll, I'll make my par and get the heck off of postage stamp so let's hit this little eight So I know you're kind of shocked that I'm actually happy with a 30 foot putt on a par three. But when you come up here, you're gonna see that there's just no room here for messing around. And I hit the eight iron pretty decent, you know? Um, now here's why I aimed at the right side of the green. The right side, you have a chance to miss hit it, right? If you don't hit it good. The other thing too is if you do pull it a little bit, you might get lucky and get it close to the hole. But you never really want to put the left side into play. So you're going to come up here and you're going to say, hey, Todd, not a bad shot, even though it's very hard to make birdies from 30 to 35 feet. But on this hole, you basically, when you got an eight iron or even a seven on your hand like that, just hit the center of the green, get your par, and move on. What's interesting, notice all the fans around this green. This green sits down in this little valley here it gets very humid in here, so they gotta keep air circulating in here to keep the green healthy. That's why you hear all those fans. Uh, but check the shot out. It's, um, I got, you know, 50 feet here. Let's, let's see how far this is. So I got a good 45 feet. I'm certainly glad I didn't hit it right at the flag. I would've been in that water there. So, you know, it's a good kind of bailout, smart line to hit a shot. Um, I'm actually gonna leave the flag in on this one just so I, cause that's a longer putt. A big swinger to the left here. So let's just, look, my, my goal on this is not, these aren't makeable. You, you shouldn't even be thinking about making these. Your goal is to give it a roll and let it roll down in there and have a tap in. If these things go in, they're pretty lucky. So you just want to give it a good roll, let the slope take it down. Big break to the left.
So, what, what, another three footer, right? <laughs> Actually, that's a lot side three feet. That's probably about five feet there. All right, let's give it a run here. I work I work a lot on short putts because nothing pisses you off more than when you miss a short putt, right? So I spend a lot of time on that little area right there um, because you want to get in there with lots of confidence. It sucks to stand over the short ones and, and not feel confident. So another good three, um, maybe hit the putt firm, but look, it's straight down the hill. It's a fast putt, 45 feet, two putt. I'm happy with that. All right, well, that's the first four holes on the back nine here at Oak Tree National. Finished off there on poster stamp with a long putt. Got, got, made a two putt from 45 feet. I'm happy with that. Made a birdie back there on the absolute hardest driving hole for me. Super excited about that. Hope you're enjoying this content as I run myself around this golf course and have a lot of fun and show you some of the stuff I do when I talk and play through a very, very difficult golf course. Don't forget, again, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. And don't forget to join me for the last five holes of the back nine.